Fastify is a web framework built for Node.js that touts itself on being the most performant or the fastest web framework out there. Now, I have not seen a framework become as successful as quickly in this ecosystem since Express. So the fact that so many people are using it, a lot of people are excited about it, I decided to show how to deploy a Fastify web server and do that in a serverless environment, but also to uh, fine tune the Lambda settings to increase the performance. And then we're gonna do some benchmarking to see how fast the Lambda execution time actually takes. So uh, in this video, we're gonna be creating a new Fastify application. We're gonna be deploying that to AWS using the Amplify CLI, and we're gonna be fine tuning our uh, memory settings. And then we're also gonna be testing it out and looking at the um, time that it takes for us to perform these different requests. So uh, I hope that you enjoy this video. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my CLI and I'm gonna create a new directory called Amplify Fastify. And in this directory, I'm gonna go ahead and initialize a new Amplify backend. Now, the front end for this is gonna be agnostic, so you could be working from a Vue app, a React app, or whatever app that you would like to be working with. Um, in this case, we're really only gonna be testing out the back end. So I'm gonna take pretty much all of the defaults when I'm running Amplify init. And then I'll go ahead and choose my AWS profile. Now that our Amplify project has been initialized, let's go ahead and run Amplify add API. And here we're gonna be adding an API, which is a combination of an API endpoint as well as a Lambda function. For the API type, I'll choose REST. For the API name, I'll call this Fastify Lambda API or something like that. Um, for the path, I'll say slash hello. And I will choose create a new function because I do not have one. Um, I can either choose a function name here or I can just take, uh, take the default. For the runtime, I will choose Node.js. And for the function template, uh, we're gonna be writing some of our own code. So I'll just start with the hello world. And then I will say no to advanced settings. Um, next, it'll ask me if I want to edit the function now. Um, we could do that now or we can wait till later. So I'm gonna choose no and then we're gonna be opening this up uh, in a moment in our text editor. I do not need to restrict a, uh, access. I'll make this a public endpoint and I do not need another path. Now what the Amplify CLI has done so far, if we run Amplify status, we'll see that we have a function as well as an API endpoint. So let's go ahead and open this up in our text editor. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the Amplify slash backend slash function folder and see that we have um, our function here. We have all of our code and our SRC directory, as well as some configuration. Um, so we're gonna be working in index.js and we'll go ahead and open that now. But before we start writing any code there, we're gonna need to install Fastify. Now Fastify is going to be um, you know, installed using NPM, but we're also going to be using this AWS Lambda Fast, uh, Fastify package. So we need to install both uh, Fastify as well as AWS Lambda Fastify. So to go ahead and do that, I'm going to change into the amplify slash backend slash function slash the name of my function slash src folder. And then here we should see that we have our package.json. So I can say yarn add or npm install AWS Lambda Fastify as well as Fastify. Now that that's installed, I will just jump back a couple directories and we see that we're um, back into our main directory. So we've installed Fastify, um, we've installed you know, uh, uh, Lambda Fastify. So now let's go ahead and look at the documentation that we're gonna be working with. Um, here we kind of get an idea of what we need to do. So we basically need to update our Lambda handler. And I'm just gonna copy and paste the code from the documentation and I'm gonna go into index.js and I'll just go ahead and replace it with, uh, with this. Now, um, by default, we're gonna be you know, given this code, but if we wanna make this uh, async, I'm gonna go ahead and instead use this handler here where we say exports.handler and we're gonna be taking in the event and the context and we're gonna be proxying both the event and the, and the context into the app component that we're about to create now. So next in my SRC directory, I'll go ahead and create a new file called app.js. And in app.js, we can actually go ahead and copy this code here. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. Now, um, the route that we're gonna be working with is slash hello, that's, because that's kind of what we set up when we 
um, created our API. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of you know update this code a little bit, and then I'm going to make this async because a lot of the code that I write is asynchronous. So um, I think this makes a lot of sense to go ahead and get us set up for success later on. And I'll just you know maybe remove some of those comments. So basically, what we have uh, here is our single route. So I need to go ahead and update this to slash hello. And then now when we call our API endpoint slash hello, we should be getting this response. Now we're not gonna be doing a whole lot else. Like we're just wanting to kind of show how to get this up and running. Uh, but the one thing we did want to do would be to uh, modify our memory settings and our Lambda function because the whole idea behind this library is performance. So let's go ahead and improve our performance in our actual execution environment as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open amp uh, Amplify, Fastify, um, basically your function name slash CloudFormation template dot JSON. And here we're gonna go ahead and find our uh, runtime. R right now we're running on Node.js 12.x, so you can either leave it at that, but let's say we wanted to go ahead and update this to 14.x. Uh, we can also set a uh, memory size. And we're gonna go ahead and set this to something like 1536. Um, now this is a good memory size to be set at. Either this or 1024 are pretty popular because they both greatly improve the performance without really uh, typically doing a lot of uh, change to your actual cost because you're gonna be saving the uh, actual execution time and instead you're gonna be having a faster execution but you're gonna be paying more for that time. So it kind of balances out because the execution time is so much faster. So for the memory size, we've set that and we've also updated the runtime. So we should be able to go ahead and deploy this. So if I go back to my CLI, I should be able to run amplify push dash dash y. And after this deployment is successful, we'll go ahead and test this out. Once our API and our function have been deployed, we should now see an API endpoint. So what I'm gonna do to test this out is I'm gonna go ahead and say curl slash our API endpoint, of course, slash hello. Here we see that we have our response, hello world. And then if we run this again, we should see it come back almost immediately. So we've run it twice. The first time was you know, um, a, a little bit longer than the second time. That's because the first time we hit this endpoint, it was a cold start. And now when we hit it again, it's gonna be a warm start. But we see how fast that is, it's pretty fast. But let's go ahead and open this up in the Amplify console and look at some of the logging. So if I go ahead and I open up uh, the functions and I click on View in Lambda, um, we're gonna go ahead and be able to look at some of the uh, memory uh, I'm sorry, the uh, performance stuff. So I'm gonna go to monitoring and I'm gonna go ahead and click view logs in CloudWatch. In Cl uh, CloudWatch, we can go ahead and click on our log stream here and then I'm gonna click view as text. Here we see that we have an idea around our invocation time. So we see that we have our init duration. So our init duration is 392 milliseconds. That means the cold start was 392 milliseconds. And then our actual function invocation was 84 milliseconds. But we see that the next time we invoke our function, there is no cold start. And the duration is only 2.56 milliseconds. Extremely fast, right? Single millisecond digit, single digit millisecond latency. Um, also, in our last invocation, we're at 8.94 millis uh, milliseconds. So extremely fast, um, really, really great performance using this combination of fine tuning your memory settings as well as using a fast framework like Fastify. If you're interested in learning more about this subject and kind of deep diving a little more around things you can do, uh, first of all, I would recommend following Alex Castlebani. He's done a lot of amazing work in this space, not only in his writing and his uh, documentation, but also in his open source. So first of all, I would also take a look at this blog post from him, Deep Dive, Finding the Optimal Resources Allocation for Your Lambda Functions. He walks through a, d a bunch of different workloads, a, a bunch of different settings, and why each of them performs the way it does, and kind of benchmarks the bunch of, a bunch of different things. Really, really great stuff. The other thing I would check out is AWS Lambda Power Tuning. This is an open source library also from Alex. 
um, that can help you visualize and fine tune your memory power configuration for your Lambda functions. So um, a lot of this stuff correlates directly with the things that we went over today in this video. So that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. Also share any videos that you find interesting. And um, again, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.